Dang it, she missed another one. Okay, Jessica answered. Jessica slowly walked up, uh, walked to the old fork and picked it up. A fork? Really? She said quietly. Then she rolled her eyes and tossed it in the trash. That was when she noticed someone new. There was a teenage girl about her age. She was lying in bed, wearing headphones. She had red hair and tiny freckles speckled across her cheeks. She solemnly played with the phone in her hand. There were three empty jello cups on her side table. Jessica pushed her mop pail closer to the room and the girl noticed her. She pulled off her headphones. Hey, she said to Jessica. Hi, Jessica said. You work here? Jessica nodded. The girl frowned. Why would you want to spend your free time around sick kids? Because I want to help them. It's a job, she said instead. What's your name? The girl asked. Jessica. I'm April. I was admitted early this morning. I'm not handling my treatment well this time around. You probably see a lot of kids like me around here. Sometimes, she said. Doesn't it bother you being around this? She waved her arm around her. Jessica shook her head. Am I supposed to treat you differently? No, but a lot of people do. You don't know how many times I see looks of pity or sadness and sometimes fear. Like if they are near me long enough, they might get sick too. I don't see that in your eyes. They stared at each other for a few moments. Then Jessica said, got to get back to work. Okay, um, you should stop by sometime. I'll be here, unfortunately, eating lime jello. Jessica nodded as she pushed her pail away. I got some springs, wiring, some bolts, and metal slats. What do you think about this tray? It's an old one, but it's cool, right? Robert said to Jessica as they sat at a lab table in class. Just the right size for the mini-bot. Jessica sat quietly, looking at the items Robert had apparently salvaged from the junkyard. She wanted to knock all of the dirty junk off the table, but instead she sat still like a statue, unmovable, emotionless, as if the sight of the old garbage didn't bother her at all. You're not saying much, Robert said to her. Jessica met his eyes, saw the curiosity, and looked away. Yes, these will work fine. Great. After the other day, I thought maybe I'd done something wrong. Maybe you didn't want to be partners anymore. He shrugged. It's kind of late to find new partners. No, I told you that I wasn't feeling well. She unclenched her fists and pointed to the tray. This is just the right size. You did a good job. I know, right? Robert pushed his hair back with his hand. I got excited when I found it. This bot is going to be so cool, Jess. You just wait and see. Jessica froze as she heard the old nickname that her closest friends had once called her. She felt a lump form in her throat and she swallowed hard. She hadn't known how difficult it would be to interact more at school and with Robert on this project. It was taking so much willpower to keep her in her seat and not run from it all. Reminding her of her past and bringing more of it into the present was not what she wanted. Mrs. Willoughby strolled by their table with their notebook to mark off their progress. Nice, Robert and Jessica. You are both pulling together your components on time. I like your initiative. She looked over the blueprints they had put together. Looks like your bot is coming together. Good job, you two. Let's see you start the build over the next few days and make some progress. Okay, Robert said with a smile. Jessica nodded. How do you feel about the project, Jessica? Mrs. Willoughby asked her directly. Jessica bulked. Mrs. Willoughby usually avoided speaking with her. Um, I feel good. It's going to be good, she replied awkwardly. How do you like working with Robert? Jessica glanced at Robert and then back to the pieces on the table. Good, she mumbled. He's a good partner. So is Jessica, Robert piped in. She's worked really hard helping me, helping me with the design and keeping us on track. I'm glad we're all good then. Mrs. Willoughby said with a small smile. I'll check back with you in a couple of days about your progress. Keep up the hard work. Mrs. Willoughby walked to the next table and Jessica could feel her shoulders relax. Robert rubbed his hands together, excitement lit in his eyes. Let's get started, Jess. Jessica watched Robert set out a few components for the structure of the minibot. She was very aware that she hadn't yet moved to help. He'd set out four metal slats that they would connect for the framing of the uh, of, so that they would connect for the framing of the mini bot three of the metal pieces were obviously old and from the junkyard one piece looked fresh and newly purchased go on pick one up she told herself but she couldn't bring herself to move past her hesitation the used parts were dirty and old and stunk of rust and grease they reminded her of things 
She'd rather forget. But she knew that she couldn't avoid this forever. She couldn't just have Robert do all the work on the minibot. That wouldn't be fair. Detachment was her greatest offence. Sometimes she envisioned her feelings as if she was a possum. When a possum felt it was in danger or threatened, it froze into a catatonic state. Jessica imagined her feelings being just like that. When she was strong, she could manage to shut down her inner feelings until the threat was over. Right now, she was the possum. Her aversion to this junk did not affect her. In fact, she was very much frozen inside until the threat to her feelings had passed. She slowly reached for the dirty metal slats. She felt the cold steel in her grip and she brought it toward her. She stared at it as she turned it over and examined the rusted edges. She could touch anything from the junkyard and be okay. It would not harm her or affect her feelings. She set it back down and rubbed her fingers against her pant leg and ex exhaled a deep breath. Success. Ooh. <laughs> How mysterious. Nurse Macy was checking on Billy's vitals. Colour had come back to his cheeks and his appetite had increased, which in turn gave him more energy. You're doing so well, Billy, she told him. You're eating all of your meals like a big boy and taking your medicine. I am a big boy, he declared as, a zoom, uh, as, a zoomed, as he zoomed a toy aeroplane over her arm. Yes, you are. Hey, Nurse Macy, when will I get to see the angel again? Angel? Nurse Macy asked, with curiosity. Yeah, the angel who helped me feel better. Oh yeah? How did the angel make you feel better? She came to me in the night, and then I felt better. I'm not sure how she did it. She must have used magic. I like her. I want to see her again. Wow, that's pretty cool. You must have a guardian angel looking over you, Billy. Billy lifted his little fists up in the triumph. Yay, I have a guardian angel! As he shifted, tiny specks fluttered on his blanket. Nurse Macy spotted the flakes of silver with dismay. What was this stuff? She quickly brushed them off Billy's blanket. Yes, you are a lucky boy. I'll check on you later and bring you some pudding. How does that sound? Yum, chocolate please. You got it, she said. I'll be back in a bit. Just then, there was a loud clang from outside Billy's room. Nurse Macy started. What in the world? She walked out of the room, and in the centre of the hallway she found... A piece of a car muffler? Frustration coursed through her. This is getting ridiculous. Who is playing these pranks? She spotted Jessica nearby, mopping. Jessica, did you see someone drop this? Jessica's eyes widened. Um, no. I didn't see anyone else in the hallway. Well, somebody thinks they are funny, and they're not, she said a little loud so the culprit would hear. So they'd better stop. Please, Jessica, grab some gloves and throw this garbage out. I'm going to try... I'm trying to keep a clean floor here. If I get a surprise visit from the higher-ups and they find this garbage around, we'll be in big trouble. Jessica nodded and hurried to the janitor's closet. Nurse Macy frowned. She'd called and checked with the nurses on the other floors and no one else was seeing junk left around in their areas. It was just in the children's wing for some reason. She decided to take a walk around the floor to see if she could spot any more tricks happening around the patient's rooms. She turned down a corridor, and sure enough, she found a couple of greasy bolts. Disgusting. Nurse Macy gritted her teeth. Once she found out who was doing this, she was going to give them a good scolding on how dangerous it is to leave industrial objects on the floor for someone to trip over, not to mention how unsanitary it was for her sick patients in the hospital. She might even turn them over to hospital security to give them a good scare. She slipped on the rubber gloves that were stuffed in her pocket and picked up the bolts and continued on until she found a small rusted can. She swiped that up, but she, didn't, she still didn't see anyone around. Then she found herself right in front of the hospital chapel. Uh, was the culprit inside? She wondered. She dumped the junk in a nearby trash bin along with the dirty gloves and stepped inside to peaceful music. There was an old woman sitting in the centre of the pews, but Nurse Macy couldn't imagine that she was the prankster. <laughs> Get it? Prankster because Father Jeremiah? Anyway, she stepped further in and walked to the front of the pews, looking around for anyone who might be suspicious. Hello, Father Jeremiah said from behind her. I think Jeremiah is rather sus. Uh, it's just, it's like, 
kind of comedic timing where it's like looking around for anyone who might be suspicious. Jeremiah just pops in behind her. Nurse Macy jumped and put her hand to her chest as she turned. Hello, father, she said quietly. Sorry, didn't see you. He lifted his thick eyebrows. How are you today, Nurse Macy? I am doing well, father. How are you? I am well. Coming in for a visit? She began to nod, and then her face heated from the fib. Well, I'm looking for someone who has been playing pranks around the children's floor, leaving pieces of garbage around. Nothing serious, I hope. It could be, so I need to put a stop to it, but I can't seem to figure out who it is yet. I'm sure you'll discover your truth soon enough. She nodded. I hope so. Father, by the way, there's a young girl named April on our floor. It would be nice if you could visit her and put her in your prayers. She could use some cheering up. Thank you for telling me. I will do that. How is our friend Jessica doing? Nurse Macy smiled. Oh, you know Jessica? She's doing okay, I think. She does a good job for us. He frowned. I worry about her. So frail. So quiet. I've been praying for her lately. She visits here often. That's nice, father. I worry about her too. She could use a friend, I think. Nurse Macy nodded. I think so. Father Jeremiah smiled. Well, peace be with you, Nurse Macy. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks, Father. Same to you. I hope you discover your prankster. Just remember to go easy on whoever it is. Everyone has a story that we don't yet know. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yes, Father, I'll remember that. Father Jeremiah is so sus right now. Nurse Macy sighed and started to return to work when her foot knocked against something. She bent down to pick it up. She narrowed her eyes as the discovery. at the discovery. It was a rusty lock. There's just so much trash around this hospital wall. This is crazy. Jessica sat on a chair in Robert's dad's workshop as Robert soldered some wires into the mini-bot. The workshop was pretty neat, she thought. Shelves with labelled boxes lined one wall. There was a work table that sat against the opposite wall and another work table in the centre that Robert was working on. She stood on the other side of the table wearing goggles. She had felt hesitant having this next meeting at his house. It was too close, too personal. But Jessica knew that they had to work together to get the mini-bot completed, and the next step had to be soldering the mini-bot's guts together and the arm that made the tray go up and down. Robert turned off the soldering tool and lifted his goggles. I think I've got it. You know, Jess, we really need to agree on the name for the mini-bot. She lifted her goggles to her forehead. I like calling it mini-bot. Even though Jessica hadn't intended to be funny, Robert chuckled. Mini-bot? The MB, huh? The M to the B to the M M M M M to the B? Yes, we could just give it a number, like the Minibot 5000. Robert made a face. Not very original. Robots aren't always original. Sometimes they're just made from boring old junkyard scraps. A heavy sadness suddenly came over Jessica as she clenched her fists. She'd really thought she'd gotten over the sadness and pain of her predicament and had set, uh, settled on an overall... Uh, acceptance, but lately emotions and feelings had been coming back at the weirdest moments. Why now? What had changed? It's not always about where things started from, Jess. It's about what you have, what you make of all the pieces once you have them. Scott Cawthon reference. Jessica frowned. My dad told me once, and it always stuck with me. Remember, he's an engineer. He's always creating something out of pieces. Knock, knock, said uh, Robert's mum as she entered the workshop. Sorry, that was very monotone. Knock, knock, said Robert's mom as she entered the workshop, holding a tray with a plate of brownies and two glasses of milk. I thought your hard-working engineers could use some body fuel. She had honey blonde hair, just like Robert, but she was shorter and her face softer. Jessica noticed that they had the same welcoming smile. His mom set the tray on the workside table. Thanks, mom, Robert said. Jessica thought she should say something too. Yes, thank you. I hope you like brownies and milk, Jessica. Do you have any allergies? No, I don't. <laughs> Good. Enjoy them, she said. I look forward to seeing your finished mini bot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Robert's mum left, and Robert grabbed the tray and brought it to their table. He set it down, grabbed a brownie, and took a bite. These are the best, he said with a mouthful. My mum is an awesome baker. Try one. Jessica was hesitant to, to take one, 
she watched Robert chew his brownie, then gulp down some milk. The truth was, she used to love brownies, they were her favourite dessert, but she never treated herself anymore, never allowed herself to enjoy sweets or anything that connected her to her old life. She believed she didn't deserve them anymore. Come on, you know you want one, Robert said to her. This is strange. Uh, the reason I say it's strange is because I feel like this could maybe relate to patient 46. You know how patient 46, like, the, the, doesn't take the, the candy and stuff and doesn't like flowers and stuff, but Vanessa does, and they seem to be the same person but different. I honestly think that patient 46 is Vanny, but, like, this is very interesting on how she feels like she doesn't deserve it, you know? Maybe patient 46 is, well, I say innocent, but, like, kind of, like, innocent at heart, but kind of changed ways or something. I don't know. Something to think about, maybe. Uh, I'm going to be theorising through the whole read-through anyway, so. Jessica tilted her head to the side. I guess I can have one. Are you not supposed to eat sugar or something? Um, not really. Jessica reached for a brownie. She could already smell the cocoa and the butter. She took a small bite and closed her eyes. The brownie tasted heavenly. Oh my gosh, that's really good, she murmured, enjoying the sweet treat. I told you, the best. Baking is one of my mum's favourite hobbies. Um, you know, Jess, Robert said. You haven't told me much about yourself or about your family. What do your parents do? Jessica blinked. You never asked. Well, and I'm not much into sharing, she interrupted in order to sidestep the conversation about family and took another wonderful bite. He smiled. Like I couldn't tell. You're not like other girls. I know. I'm not trying to be conceited. I just know that I'm different. Weird. I wouldn't call you weird. I mean, other girls I've met like to talk about themselves. Sometimes too much. Worry about a lot of drama. You handle things differently, quietly. It's nice. Jessica didn't know what to say. Anyway, he continued on, then, con then cleared his throat. You know, I'm new here and I don't have any friends, yes? You heard about the prom coming up. She nodded. I'm not a junior. I am. Jessica met his eyes, and Robert seemed to blush. He brushed a nervous hand across his hair. I wondered if you would like to go with me. What? To the prom. I thought it would be fun to go together. Jessica stared at him in shock, her brownie half-eaten in her hand. She was actually speechless. She'd worked so hard to separate herself from school, from others, to be as invisible as she could make herself. And now she'd met a new boy, who strangely didn't think she was weird, and wanted to take her to the prom like a normal teenager. It's in a week, he said, quickly, to fill the silence. Do you think you'll have to work? Maybe you can request it off. Um, his cheeks reddened. I mean, if you want to go with me, unless you were already asked. Who would ask Zombie Girl? No one's asked me. Robert smiled. Then, what do you say, Jess? Would you like to go with me? That night, Jessica rushed to the hospital chapel. Her heart was beating fast. For the first time in a while, her goal was skewered, as if she couldn't see the finish line anymore. And it didn't feel good at all. She sat down on the first pew and stared off into space. She didn't know what to do. She had left Robert's, or Robert's awkwardly telling him she had to find out if she could get the night off. She had let him know and she'd come straight to the chapel for guidance. She pulled the pendant over her head and clenched it in her hands, closing her eyes. Please help me know what to do. Please guide me. I never thought this would happen. I had made a plan, and now things have changed. I did my best to keep to myself and to do the right thing, and now everything seems to be falling apart. Should I pray with you, Jessica? Father Jeremiah asked from beside her. Jessica swallowed. I don't know. I mean, if you want. Father Jeremiah sat next to her. For a few moments, they sat in silence. I don't know what to do. Jessica finally spoke to Father Jeremiah as she stared down at her pendant. I always believed this pendant gave me strength, so that when I worked around the sick children, I could give them a piece of it to help them too. I had thought I had found this job for that reason, to help others, to redeem myself for the bad choice I'd made in the past. But now things are changing... And I find myself wondering if it's okay to give my to, to to give to myself again by having some of my own life back, something normal. I'm not sure if it's okay though. 
And the worst part is that I had been so certain that I was on the right path. Why do you feel like you can't just give to yourself, Jessica? Because of the past. A tremor radiated through her body. The past. The past. The horrible past. I... I just didn't make the right choice. I mean, that's how I got where I am. I gave up everything, so there had to be a good reason for that, right? And now I'm asking for just a little piece back. Not something so big, really. Just a little thing for myself. Is it too wrong to ask? Jessica looked down at her pendant. It was so slim now. Barely anything left. Was she too late to ask for something in return? Did she even deserve to ask? Why didn't she have an answer? Of course not. When we do work for others, we have to be open to receiving as well. If we overgive, we become out of balance and we can make ourselves ill or sad. Giving to others is a great gift. But yes, Jessica, giving back to ourselves is a gift as well. God loves all of his children and he wants everyone to feel happiness and love. Jessica looked at him directly in the eyes for the first time. Is that really true? How do you know? Father Jeremiah lifted his eyebrows. Because I know it in my heart to be true. He's so sus, man. <laughs> Father Jeremiah watched Jessica slowly stand and leave. Her head bent down in sadness. Poor child, he thought. He wished he could be more of help to her, but he knew from experience that he couldn't save everyone. Oh, that's interesting. He knew from experience he couldn't save everyone? Has he killed people? <laughs> he could only do his best to guide them. He began to rise when he looked down at the floor and found a metal circle with spikes on the edges. He picked it up, studying the object. Some kind of gear, it seemed. That's odd, he thought. He frowned and glanced at the door Jessica had just exited. Jessica walked back to the children's floor. The lights were lowered for the evening. She could hear the beeps of machines and oxygen blowing air. Most of the kids were asleep. However, April was still awake. Come in here, Jessica. I see you. April called to her. Jessica tried not to be noticed. She wasn't doing such a good job of that lately. She stepped into April's room. Hi. Where's your mop? April wanted to know. Still in the cleaning closet. There was a beat of silence between them. It's cancer in the blood, if you are wondering why I'm here, April told her. There were dark circles under her eyes, like the ones Jessica had covered up with her makeup. I'll be losing my hair again soon. Bold would be the new me. Jessica didn't respond. You're pretty, April said, studying her. Tell me about your school, your life. I've been in and out of school for the past couple of years. Missed out on a lot of my stuff. My friends barely speak to me now. They don't know what to say. They think I don't want to hear how much fun they're having, but I do. I used to play basketball. I'm athletic, or used to be. What I wouldn't give to run down a court and shoot baskets again. But now, I can just do that in my imagination. So, you tell me, please. Just for a few minutes, help me be part of your world. Jessica grabbed her pendant hanging from her neck and rolled it back and forth on the chain. She knew she really didn't have a life, not the one she really wanted. But if embellishing a little about how wonderful her life was would help April, then she would try to talk about herself. Leaning against the wall, Jessica told her about Robert and the minibot. She told her how nice and kind he was to her when others hadn't been, that the project was halfway complete, complete and that he just asked her to the prom. April listened with a smile and a few questions thrown in, with swoons over Robert and the possibility of going to the prom. Maybe one day, I'll get to go to the prom, April said. I can dream, right? You will go to the prom, Jessica said, if you believe it. I can picture it. I would be completely healed. My hair would be full and healthy. I think I would have a bright pink dress or a green one with matching shoes. I would go with a nice boy like your friend Robert. I would dance all night and laugh with friends. Maybe even be part of the royal prom court. Then we would all go out together somewhere like the beach. We'd run around a small campfire and talk about our dreams. The stars and moon will shine down on us and maybe the boy would give me his coat because I was cold. And then it was quiet and we were alone. He would give me a kiss under the stars. It would be the best night of my life. This is kind of um, reminiscent of the real Jake. Where like Jake was, obvi Jake obviously also had cancer. And he was like thinking of who, what he would do if he didn't, you know. 
the real Jake. Uh, yeah, that, I like I like that. It's kind of like a well, not really a parallel, but very nice. Uh, Jessica pictured the scene along with April, but instead of April, it was Jessica having the best night of her of her life at prom. Jessica felt herself yearn for a wonderful and normal experience, just like April had described. I'm tired now. April lowered herself on the pillow and closed her eyes. We'll talk again sometime, Jessica. Okay. Jessica clenched the pendant as she looked at April. She could help April, she thought. But was she supposed to help everyone? Father Jeremiah's words drifted into her head. Giving to others is a great gift, but yes, Jessica, giving back to ourselves is a gift as well. With guilt heavy on her shoulders, Jessica quietly drifted back into the dark hallway. After school, Jessica and Robert were ready for a first test run with the minibot. Robert wanted a quiet place so other students wouldn't bother them. Jessica suggested the cemetery. The day was sunny and the cemetery was fairly empty of visitors. You were right, it is pretty quiet here, Robert said as he looked around. Yes, almost peaceful, Jessica said as she led him to a far empty section of a parking lot. How did you end up finding this place? he asked. Jessica blinked. Um, well, his eyes widened. Oh, do you know someone buried here? Jeez, I'm sorry. Oh, no, never mind, she said, not having an explanation that he would understand. Let's just get set up. The small bot was melded together with various metal parts from the junkyard, and the remaining components brought to the hardware's, hardware store with a flat tray on its back. The arm had been fused together with an aluminium tubing, with the wires tucked inside. It was not yet painted or officially named, but it was ready for a trial run. Robert set the mini bot down and then placed a soda can on the back of its tray. Okay, Jess, this is our first test run for the mini bot 5000, Robert announced. Jessica's eyes widened. You named it after my choice? I thought you said it wasn't original enough. Yeah, but it's the best name we have, and MB deserves one. So, mini bot 5000 it is. Are you ready to take some notes? <laughs> Lately being with Robert and experiencing his kindness, Jessica felt an unfamiliar warmth inside of her when she spent time with him and when he made nice gestures to her like choosing her name for the minibot. She couldn't really remember feeling this way before. Or maybe it had been so long that she'd forgotten. She wasn't sure if that was wrong or right, but she knew she enjoyed feeling good. She nodded. Notebook. Check. Okay. Switching on the minibot 5000. Turning on the remote. Here goes nothing. Robert pushed the knob on the controller forward. There was a pause. Then the minibot shifted an inch forward and started rolling. Yes, it's working, Robert shouted. Jessica smiled as excitement for creating something new rushed over her. We actually did it. Okay, here goes the ultimate test. Robert pushed a button on the remote and the tray rose slightly. Then he switched the button again and the tray shifted back down. All right, he said with excitement. The lift works. Robert directed the Minibot 5000 to turn right and then left, then back around to stop in front of Robert's feet right before a wheel surprisingly fell off. The Minibot 5000 fell to one side. The soda can tipped over and fell to the ground. They stared at the wheel as it rolled off to the side. Then they laughed. We can fix that, he said, and smiled at Jessica. We succeeded with our first run of the Minibot 5000. We make a good team partner. Jessica nodded. Yes. She took a deep breath. And Robert. Yeah. Something fluttered in her stomach. I would like to go to the prom you. Robert's smile got bigger. You would? Awesome, he said. I'll get the tickets tomorrow at lunch. I can meet you at your house before the dance. Um, no, I can meet you there. It'll be easier for me. Are you sure? Yes. Oh, okay. We can go eat afterward if you want. I don't know all the good places to eat yet, but maybe you can tell me your favourite. Maybe. Just let me know what the colour of your dress will be as soon as you know, so then I can try and max match the tux if possible. Depends on what's available at the rental. What a sweetheart. <laughs> colour of the dress? Oh, okay. Alright. Great, Jess. It would be fun. You want to do the honours and get this wheel back on the Minibot 5000? He offered her the socket wrench. Jessica gave a small smile and took the wrench. Sure. Nurse Macy watched Jessica mopping the floor. Something was definitely off. Jessica stared into space, barely moving. Usually her head was down, as the girl was doing her best not to be noticed, and today it was like she was in a trance. Nurse Macy recalled 
what Father Jeremiah had said. She could use a friend, I think. Jessica, are you okay? Nurse Macy asked her. Do you need a break? How about some water? You could be dehydrated. Jessica blinked. No, I'm okay. Are you sure? Jessica nodded. If you need help with anything, please don't hesitate to ask. Jessica stared at her a moment, and Nurse Macy began to feel like Jessica would forget to speak when she finally blinked. I'm going to the prom, she said. Nurse Macy smiled, happily surprised. That's wonderful! Who's the lucky boy? His name is Robert. He's my science partner. I bet you're excited. Jessica didn't answer. Is there something else bothering you? Nurse Macy asked her. She wished she knew what was going on in her mind. I've never been to the prom before. I don't know what to expect. And I don't know what to do about a dress. Nurse Macy looked at Jessica with compassion. She wanted to ask her, what about her mum or dad? Or a sibling or a relative? But she felt those personal questions might shut down Jessica completely at this vulnerable moment. She didn't know Jessica's personal story, but she understood Jessica was fragile and secretive about her life. There appeared to be a sadness about her that never seemed to go away. In Nurse Macy's experience, deep trauma usually was the cause of that in the kids she cared for. Nurse Macy always had this drive within her to help others, especially caring for the young. Even though Jessica wasn't a patient, she could tell the girl needed her help. Do you need some assistance in that area? She asked her softly. Jessica stared down at the floor for a moment. Then Nurse Macy watched her, her nod her head up and down. It was very hard for Jessica to ask for help and Nurse Macy felt a glow in her chest that she trusted her enough to ask. I'm happy for you, Jessica. I have an hour-long lunch break soon. We can go right to the department store, and I'll give you some advice on a dress. How does that sound? That would be good. I'll grab you when it's time. Jessica stood in a slim, ankle-length lilac dress in front of a mirror in the fitting area of a department store. There were pale flowers etched into the design. The material was soft on her skin and beneath her fingers as she brushed her hand down her hip. She couldn't recall feeling a dress so soft before. She'd tried on a few before this one. There had been so many colours of dresses. Pink, white, blue, yellow, red and black. Short dresses and long ones. Off the shoulder or with thin or thick straps. Puffy skirts or straight ones. Dresses that glittered or shined. She'd wanted to wear black but Nurse Macy convinced her to try something with colour. Jessica hadn't looked at the price tag, but she hardly used the money she got from the job at the hospital, so she had plenty of savings to buy the dress and some shoes. Jessica, you look stunning, Nurse Macy said in her gleeful way. Jessica really looked at herself. She lost a lot more weight recently, but she was still pretty, with her high cheekbones and full lips. Her hair was still thick and shiny. Her shoulders and arms looked delicate in the dress. In the mirror... She saw her lips curve, and for just a moment, she could believe she was a regular girl buying a dress to go to the prom with a boy she liked, and who liked her back. That her life was normal and perfect. I think I like it, she said with a small smile. I do too. Let's get you some shoes to match. Deep down, Jessica knew this was like a fairy tale, and everything could burst and go back to the way things were soon enough. She'd asked Father Jeremiah if this was okay to allow herself to have something for herself, and he seemed to think it was okay. To her, Father Jeremiah represented life and death and forgiveness. He had to know what was right and what was wrong, right? Because now Jessica felt uncertain and fragile. Feelings she didn't feel comfortable with at all. Nurse Macy brought her over a matching pair of simple purple shoes. What do you think? Jessica slipped them on, and her weight and her height went up two inches. They fit. Not only do they fit, but they are perfect. You're going to look beautiful on prom night, Jessica, and you're going to have such a wonderful time. Can you walk okay? Jessica tried to walk and felt a little clumsy. Oof, it's not as easy as it looks. I've seen lots of women he wear heels, but they walk so naturally. Nurse Macy giggled. They were once like you. With some practice, you'll get the hang of it in no time. Just know it's normal for your feet to feel a little sore, especially after dancing. Don't ask me why we wear these things and torture ourselves, but they make our feet look pretty, don't you think? They do. Jessica glanced at Nurse Macy in the mirror as she gave her tips on how to walk confidently. Nurse Macy had always been kind to her, just as she was kind to all her patients. When other people at the hospital avoided Jessica, Nurse Macy always tried to talk to her, and now she was here helping her when Jessica most needed it. Once upon a time in her old life, 
Jessica may have considered her a true friend, and had she been a normal girl, she very much would have wanted to be a nurse, just like Nurse Macy, someone she admired for her positive attitude and the way she cared for her patients. Bringing joy to others who were ill truly was a gift just like the kind Father Jeremiah talked about. I bet your family will love the dress you've picked out, Nurse Macy said, searching Jessica's gaze in the mirror. Um, Jessica said as she tried to think of a response. She, she supposed a typical parent would have loved seeing their daughter in a pretty prom dress, but that wasn't the case for Jessica. She tried to think of something to say, but her mind went blank. A sales lady walked by them in the fitting room and stopped. Wow, your daughter looks gorgeous. Is this for a prom? Jessica and Nurse Macy locked eyes in the mirror, and Jessica had no idea how to respond. She simply looked down at her shoes, her hair shielding her face. She does, doesn't she? Nurse Macy suddenly said. Yes, it is for prom, and this is the perfect dress. We will definitely take the dress and the shoes. Jessica raised her head and blinked in astonishment. She didn't question why Nurse Macy didn't correct the sales lady about her being her mum. She guessed it didn't really matter. Explanations took too much energy sometimes. It was better just to let others see what they wanted to see. As Jessica continued to look at herself, uh, she, le <laughs> she let hope spread inside her for the first time in a long time. Prom night was going to be perfect. After her shift, Nurse Macy wanted a nice hot meal while watching one of her favourite TV shows. She vowed she would get that soon enough. It had been about a week since she'd taken Jessica to buy her prom dress, and she'd been wearing, her with, wearing with herself about what she should do. Should she leave well enough alone and let Jessica's business be, or should she take action to help her? She'd finally decided to take action. Nurse Macy rechecked the copy of Jessica's work application that she'd submitted to the hospital and tried not to let the guilt get to her for invading the young girl's privacy or violating high... Uh, I don't know why I started saying high. H-I-P-A-A. HIPAA. -A. She read Jessica's address and put it into her phone's GPS app to guide her to Jessica's home. Oh my gosh. <laughs> She felt she was doing this in Jessica's best interest by getting down to the truth of the teen's family life. Nurse Macy felt if she knew what was going on at home, then she would be able to help her. Maybe speak to her parents or her guardian, explain her worries about Jessica's health and demeanour. Perhaps even let them know that Jessica needed some help emotionally. Jessica was a wonderful girl. She deserved family support for things like prom. She deserved someone to care about her. She deserved to be happy. Nurse Macy knew Jessica was hiding something about her home life, but she wasn't sure what it could be. Yes, she had a habit of sticking her nose where it didn't belong, but that was what made her a good darn nurse. Oh, darn good nurse, sorry. Uh, she investigated the, the facts to, help, to better help her patients, and with Jessica it was no different. When Nurse Macy saw someone in need, she reached out to help. Especially when the poor girl had to ask her co-worker to help her get a dress for prom. Where was her mother or father, or her guardian? Why wouldn't a 14-year-old have someone to turn to? It was so sad, and she just couldn't stand it. A few minutes later, she drove down an older section of town. Some of the street lights were burnt out, and she could see many of the homes were run down. There were a couple of boarded-up windows with graffiti sprayed across garage doors. Turn right on Cemetery Lane. Oh, sorry, I have to, I have to do it in the voice. Turn right in Cemetery Lane. That's not the voice, whatever. Her apparatus to her. Uh, Nurse Macy turned right. The night was clear and the stars shined above the town. She drove past the cemetery and looking at the dark gravestones felt a shiver crawl down her back. The poor girl lives near the cemetery, she realised. Down the end of the road was the last dilapidated house on the block. Your destination is on your left. Nurse Macy pulled along the sidewalk and parked her car. She got out and clicked her car fob to lock her doors. She took a deep breath and pulled her coat closer around her neck against the cold of that evening. She would simply explain to Jessica and her family that she was worried about her and wanted to make sure she was okay. Then she would ask to speak to her guardian alone and explain her worries. She didn't want to embarrass Jessica at all. She walked up the cracked walkway to the door. The light was dim and she could see the light on the inside through the curtains. The paint was chipping off the house and door. Nurse Macy knocked. She heard a little dog bark and footsteps before the door swung open. 
An old woman with glasses stood in the doorway. She had curlers in her hair and no teeth. Nurse Macy could tell by the way her lips were pursed. Her skin was wrinkled and pale. She wore an old ripped robe, the colour of grey storm clouds. Yes? Not yes? <laughs> the old woman said as she squinted at Nurse Macy through the thick glasses. Hello, my name is Nurse Macy. Nurse? Don't need no checkup. Had one just the other day. Shush up, Pipsy. <laughs> the old woman said to the little barking dog. Oh, Pipsy. Oh, no, I work with Jessica. Are you her grandmother? Nurse Macy could understand deeply, clearly, why Jessica didn't have the support she needed. If she was living with her grandmother, she likely had to take care of this woman, rather than the other way around. Who did you say? Don't have my hearing aid in. Can't hear as good as I used to. Nurse Macy leaned in closer. Jessica, is she here? May I speak with you about Jessica? Jessica? Huh? I don't know no Jessica. Nurse Macy blinked in confusion. She stepped back to look at the house number. Um, is this 333 Cemetery Lane? Yes, but you have the wrong house. No Jessica here. Now I need to get back to my shows. Don't want to buy nothing either. Oh, well, I'm sorry. I don't know what happened. The door was shut in her face and then the porch light turned off. Hehehe. <laughs>